Hey folks, David Fine here. This is a specimen of Nathalus Ioli, the dainty sulfur. And I'm taking this specimen for uh, scientific research. We're gonna do some videos on, um, on this species. And so I wanted to take a specimen. I took this from my backyard. But guys, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you guys one of the most frustrating things that uh, occurs when you're collecting insects, or sp specifically butterflies and moths, is when the specimen dies, it will invert its wings. It's almost like payback. Like, no, you're not gonna use me for scientific research. I'm gonna close my wings the, the improper way because when they invert their wings, guys, th these wings should be folded the other way. That Like, this is the actual underside of the butterfly here. And what they do is they close up and jam their wings shut this way. And when they dry like this, it makes it very, very difficult to mount the specimen. And so what we've got to do is we've got to learn how to flip the butterfly's wings over without destroying the specimen. And especially when you get to little guys like these, um, Comment down below if you've ever destroyed a specimen trying to invert the wings, okay? So guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you just a couple techniques I learned uh, on how to invert the wings of a butterfly and do so without destroying your specimen. So guys, like, subscribe, and share. Let's get to the video. All right, guys, one of the, one of the first things that I typically do, if I'm gonna go mount my specimen and I'm gonna invert the wings, once the specimen dies, the bodily fluids start to evaporate. Uh, one thing that takes place is it becomes very tricky to get those wings back into place. And one of the things that happens is the muscles in the thorax, let me zoom in here a little bit more. Okay, this is a tiny butterfly, guys. The muscles in the thorax start to lose their fluids and they lose their flexibility. So one of the things that I do is I will take my forceps and I will just give a little pinch on the thorax, just like that. And what that does, you can actually see the, the, the wings actually move. That's actually the muscles relaxing. It's, it's literally stretching the muscles. Now I, did, I just put a little tiny bit of pressure on that thorax because when you put a little pressure on the thorax like that it it'll it just stretches the muscles it stretches out the ligaments the tendons whatever and now this butterfly becomes much more pliable and it's a lot more pliable it's a lot more flexible and you can flex these wings a lot easier than you would have had you not given up it's like doing calisthenics before working out it's a it's a good tip guys and don't use your fingers always got to use a forceps when you're doing this or you'll just destroy your butterflies with especially when you got big fat man fingers like me image this is a little dainty sulfur this is a very tiny butterfly here's my hands uh guys this butterfly is about an inch total wingspan so step number one guys always use a good pair of forceps when you're gonna do this. If you use your fingers, you've got greases and oils on your fingers and it descales the butterflies. So uh, using metal forceps like this eliminates the descaling, or at least most of it, uh, when this happens. And so get yourself a good pair of flat forceps. There's some spade tip ones that BioQuip products sells and I'll send a link to BioQuip products in my uh, description of this video where I get all my entomological supplies. So uh, these forceps guys are flat. And what you want to do, step number two, is you want to always grab the butterfly by one side only. And you want to grab both the forewing and the hindwing. Okay. Don't just grab the forewing when you're gonna grab your thing. Cause if you just grab the forewing and you try to move your specimen, your hind wing's gonna get left behind and it's not gonna close properly. So uh, what you wanna do is you wanna grab both the forewing and the hind wing with the, with the forceps. 
Let's see if I can focus here a little bit better for you. Okay, so forewing and the hind wing with the forceps. Also, be careful not to get any of the legs. So I'm gonna zoom in here. You don't wanna grab the legs with the forceps accidentally because if you grab those legs and you try to twist that thing around, your specimen is going to get messed up. The wings are gonna kink and bend and it's gonna be a mess. So uh, that's the first step, guys. You gotta grab your butterfly the right way. Now that I have the butterfly grabbed the, white, the right way, the next step, guys, is most important. And I'm gonna try and show this to you as best I can. I'm holding my phone with the palm of my hand while I'm doing this. So what you can do is now I've got my butterfly specimen grabbed by the forewing and the hindwing, and also as close to the thorax as possible. You don't wanna grab your specimen with your forceps out here. You wanna grab it in as close to the, to the thorax of the butterfly as possible because that is where the wing is the strongest and you're not gonna break the wing of the insect, okay? So grab it as close to the thorax as possible. Don't get any legs. Get both the forewing and the hindwing. Okay, now take your index finger and you're gonna to go to the other wing and slowly, slowly push the wing down and then all, and it's just kind of tr tricky to show you guys on with this little specimen. Maybe I should do this with a larger butterfly, but you're gonna try and grab that wing and move it. You gotta try and get both the forewing and the hindwing and move them all the way around. So now the wings are now closed on the top of the specimen. And now, I have my specimen and you really wanna grab them on the, as close to the thorax as possible. Okay, all right guys, now I have successfully inverted the wings of my little dainty sulfur here, Nathalus ioli, and that is how you want to store your specimen. So if you're gonna put it in like a glassine envelope like this, now you put them in your envelope, okay? And you can put them in your envelope and a lot of times they will they will invert again. So when you put them in your envelope, make sure that the envelope is somewhat closed and put a little bit of pressure on the envelope uh, on both sides, like pinch it, so that you know that that butterfly doesn't have enough space to invert again. And then you can close your envelope and you can put him for storage. Or you can obviously go and mount your specimen immediately once you invert. But make sure, guys, don't be lazy. If you're putting uh, butterfly or moth specimens in envelopes for storage uh, until you get a chance to spread your specimen, make sure you put the, uh, the wings the right way because once they start to dry, it becomes a huge, huge, huge problem inverting them again uh, or, or making sure that the wings are oriented properly. Uh, once they start to dry and lose their natural bodily fluids, they, uh, the wings want to stay in the inverted position. It gets very, very difficult. So do it as soon as you can. Uh, make sure you're, while your specimen is fresh, you invert the wings and the, the proper way and put them either in your envelope or you go ahead and mount them. That's about it. We have inverted the wings on this little, tiny, little butterfly, Nathalus ioli. This little specimen, we're going to go ahead and mount and label so that we have our scientific specimen done properly. And so guys, hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something. Um, this is a frustrating thing and it takes a little time to get used to. So guys, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We've got plenty of more how-tos on how to curate a, a Lepidoptera collection um, for scientific research. And so check out our playlist for those videos, guys. Take care. Let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Bye now.